What's up geeks and gamers, it's Jeremy coming to you with another video and today we are talking about The Last of Us Part 2, the ending, a couple of the details within the ending and I'm going to be vague about what I'm saying, I'm not going to go into any specifics, I'm going to be very vague, very overarching when I'm talking about this, but I want to talk about how the reaction is going to be. Now I have watched all of the crucial elements of this game. It's on YouTube if you want to look for it. There are many videos out there with all of the specifics within. There are horrific character decisions. Characters don't even act like they were supposed to act. Um, you're, you're forced to play as other characters that you are going to absolutely despise. And the ending will go down as one of the worst endings in the history of video games. The game, now again, it's hard to say like, you have to be specific when you're talking about these things, but the game will probably play like The Last of Us played. It will be beautiful. You know, all of those things are going to be the same or maybe slightly better, but the writing and the characters are going to be the problem here. And again, if you know anything about the first Last of Us game, it was carried by the characters and the story. The gameplay was fine, but it was about the characters and the story. This is what is a disaster in this game. The characters that you have come to know and love, specifically Joel, is horrendous in this game. And the decisions that are made around Joel are... It's just, it's all-time bad. Like, we're talking Game of Thrones-level character assassination. We all know what happened with Game of Thrones with the first, you know, five seasons, six seasons. We're talking about some of the greatest television ever. And then a lot of people had a problem with the final two seasons. I really only had a problem with the final season. But regardless, you're talking about character assassination of the highest order. And this is what we're talking about with The Last of Us 2. And the ending itself... Oh my gosh, I can't imagine, I can't imagine playing this game and not knowing the spoilers and experiencing this moment and, and how it's handled. Wow, and again, we're talking a mega fallout. We're talking an epic, and I don't like to use the word epic unless I'm joking around, but we're talking about an epic level of frustration that is going to happen when people play this game and experience the choices made within this game. I said the same thing with Game of Thrones Season 8 when Episode 3 happened. Um, and, you know, I was really kind of ahead of a lot of people um, with my frustration with Episode 3. But then episode four happened and then episode it just got worse and worse and at some point in there i read the spoilers because things were so bad and when i read the spoilers i i couldn't believe the spoilers for for game of thrones like i, I really i I, re I remember talking to people and I'm like this, this can't be real and, and, and it was real and the reality of experiencing those those spoilers were even far worse than reading them and I haven't played the game, obviously, but I've seen the game, um, and I can only imagine that when you experience this, regardless if you hear it, when you experience these decisions and what actually transpires within this game, and then you get to the ending, which is just horrific in every way possible... Um, it is, this is going to be bad. This is going to be really bad. I think Neil Druckmann is definitely going to be a infamous person. He's going to be a Ryan Johnson level, uh, of infamous. I, I, I even made the comment a long time ago, uh, when I was watching the last Jedi trailer that Ryan Johnson was going to be a legend after this movie. And I was right for the wrong reasons though. Um, and yeah, same's going to happen with Neil Druckmann. Um, unbelievable disrespect to the characters, to the audience, to the fans, to the to the people that have really invested a lot of their you know passion into this and been looking forward to it. But this is what happens when you have Anita Sarkeesian get involved and feminist propaganda, and we're seeing it everywhere. I mean, this is not this is not isolated to The Last of Us Part Two, but The Last of Us Part Two is such a a popular franchise that so many people were invested in, but we're seeing it all across 
you know, the entertainment industry and even beyond the entertainment industry now. I mean, we're, we're living literally in a clown world and it just gets crazier every single day. But this is what we've been talking about here on this channel and other channels for years now is this identity politics nonsense that continues to get involved with the entertainment industry. And is there any question now that we were right? We were ahead of the curve on all of this? I mean, it is affecting everything that we are a fan of right now and the last of us part two is going to be on the level of a last jedi on the level of a game of thrones season eight we are talking about an unbelievable disaster in the waiting once fans get their hands on this game and experience these decisions i have seen a lot of the videos you know, um, okay, so let me show you a few comments on, so this is on one of the videos right here, um, and it, this is based on the ending, and it says, this is like collecting all of the Infinity Stones just to not snap at the end. <laughs> it's so perfect. Uh, this is even more absurd than the leaks. Uh, the ending was so bad. Um, yeah, she, I mean, I don't want to get into specifics. I mean, you can read it if you want. Uh, Neil Cuckman must feel, feel so proud of himself when he came up with the plot like this. You know, um, the ending of this game, the ending is like Game of Thrones season eight type of deal. This is literally even worse than I expected. Good Lord. Uh, after this ending, I kind of wish uh, Ellie <laughs> was killed to save mankind. Uh, it, it's it's unbelievable, man. Uh, this, is, this is like next level shit. And... I don't really think people are prepared. Uh, this ending will go down as the biggest letdown in gaming history. This is bad. This is really, really bad. And they deserve it. Naughty Dog deserve it. deserves it. Neil Cuckman deserves it. Um, look what they've done to me. Look what they've done to so many other people. Uh, they took down my Twitter account of 23,000 followers because I posted memes of Scott Steiner. You know, I mean, this is this is where they're at. They they struck this channel. They've struck my friends' channels. They've struck other creators' channels. Um, they've struck Reddit posts. This is this is Naughty Dog right here. There's no defense of Naughty Dog at this point. So uh, we are looking at we are looking at an all time disaster with this game. The games journalists are eating it up. They're giving it tens across the board because of course they are because they are worried about identity politics, not actually honoring characters and honoring story and honoring mythology. No, 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 no. We just need identity politics. That is what games journalists look forward to. So um, other than that, I would love to hear your thoughts. Again, I, I will link to the the in I will link to the ending um, and specific scenes within the games. Uh, but again, they're here all over YouTube. You can search it out. I could probably speci uh, talk about specifics at this point, um, but the way things are going right now, it, it's just ridiculous. Um, also, go over, check out geeksandgamers.com. This will, you know, the more support we get on geeksandgamers.com, the more uh, I really won't give a shit about, you know, these bullshit policies. This is why I don't really care about the Twitter account being taken down. Um, you know, I, I'm focused on our website. We have forums. We have profiles over there. We have a premium membership, um, $10 a month if you're interested in, you know, um, getting involved with that. And more perks are going to be coming with that $10 in the near future. I'm not looking to add a lot of uh, tiers per se. Basically, if you pay ten dollars, I'm. I mean, if if we can get the goal, the goal is after three months, and and, it, and maybe it takes six months, maybe it takes a year. I'm not sure, but if we can get one thousand members on that website at ten dollars, I'll be producing so much content for that ten dollars. Um, you know, I, I'm not really looking to get the tiers involved per se. I just want to provide great content for you for ten dollars a month. Um, for, from a wide variety uh, of ways within the team, uh, different streams and, and different ideas. You're going to have a word. You're going to have a, uh, a say in what we're doing moving forward. So that's the vision um, for geeksandgamers.com. I appreciate the people that have already signed up and just people that are joining in in the forums and making an account. And, you know, the next step is for us to get an app um, for Geeks and Gamers. And 
like I've said, you have my word that if uh, the more support we get, the the more resources I will put behind, you know, creating a platform and a place where people can come and, you know, not, not really worried about being silenced for unfair reasons. Everything that we're going to have structured in place, because obviously it, it can't be the wild, wild west. We have to have some type of, of rules and structure and, you know, policy in place for, for people on the platform, but it will be consistent. You know, it won't be because you shared this opinion wrong or that opinion. There will be consistent rules that everyone will be held to the same standard. There won't be, you know, picking and choosing like we see on every other social media platform. But uh, thank you guys for the support. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Solo lost money. Raylos are weird. Fuck naughty dog. And we will talk to you later.